nothing can go in with you. And, and all that is on. I found out on Deacon Matthew that all that was on. When I went in the dark room, there was only a red light. And, and the red light is um, so critical. It's so critical because the red light is symbolic or a metaphor for the blood. Because sometimes when you're in a dark situation, there's only one solution. You got to know that I'm covered by the blood. Oh, God. You see, I know that I'm a part of the new neo-Pentecostal generation where we only shout over cars, clothes, and money. But I grew up in the church where we pleaded the blood of Jesus. Saving the blood of Jesus. Against you. And everybody's not shouting. Everybody's not jumping around wherever you are because some of you don't know what it's like to shout simply because I'm saved. Oh, boy. I thought I'd find the sanctified to so If he never does anything else just because he died for me. That's enough. And I don't know if anybody else knows anything that has that type of it. It is there. Anybody else in this house who's just glad to be saved? Just because they hung him high and they stretched him wide. He hung his head and then he got it. But every old Sunday morning he got it. With all the power. In his name. I thought I'd get more up in the sanctified church because yes, life now is sweet. And my joy is complete and good. Because I'm saved. I'm saved. Thank God. I'm saved. I was looking for uh, the saved people. When we used to say that somebody would take off the run, uh, God gave me the fast forward first on it. We run it, and then we pray. Because life now is sweet, and my joy is complete because I'm saved. So stay with me right here. It won't be too much longer. What's critical is when you went back to photo map. They said because you trusted your negatives with us. Because you turned your negatives over to us without knowing the process. What we're going to do is give you double exposure. And I came for somebody to think who knows it. If some things have been negative for you this year, can I tell you, July is the month for doubling up. God is going to give you what you're praying for in secret and what you're going to get this month. God is going to give it to you. Where's it now? Shake it together. And run it over. Yes, Lord. And so now, that um, they have given you your pictures. The proof that they gave you the right picture is that they gave you, here it is, your negatives back. But what we notice is that the negatives, um, here it is, don't look, the negatives don't look like the pictures. Negatives are dark. The negatives are blurry. It's not until you hold the negatives up to the light that you see the image of the picture. And those of you who will receive it today, what you're looking at now is not the picture. It's just 
negatives. Come on, Bishop. Come on, Bishop. But if, uh, Brother Burr, but if you hold your negative situation up to the light, your understanding, I'm oh, coming to get you, your understand that greater is coming. And I tell you, don't think based off of what you're dealing with right now. Because where you are now is not your last stop. Can I tell somebody in this room, somebody watching me today, your best job has not come yet. Your next car is not even off the assembly line. Your, your next house hasn't even been built yet. Can I tell you some single person in this room who is listening to me? The person that you are going to marry is not even in Atlanta yet. God says, you have just been looking at the negative. But God is getting ready to show me what my blessing is really going to look like. Some of you can operate at a different level of faith because somebody on the road is not shouting because they are only looking at negatives. But if God just gave you Come on, a sneak preview of what your future is going to look on, like, Bishop. would you just shout right now? Like God is going to do something amazing in your life. Shout like the best is yet. Oh, oh, the best is yet. Oh, 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 because greater is on the way. Come on, tell us, greater is on the way. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, come on, we just have bold faith and tell somebody you ain't seen nothing yet. Because greater is on the way. Ah, uh,
will take place in your body in the next eight days. And some of y'all don't believe you can shout when they die. But by faith, uh, is there anybody, are there any believers that, who understand by faith that God is going to do something amazing in my life in the next eight days? If you got that kind of faith, I dare you to leave up real quick and shout out loud, Lord, I know you can do it in eight days. Oh, God. Yes, Lord. I said, Lord, I know you can do it in eight days. If you got that type of faith, would you lean over and tell your neighbor, don't see me in eight days. Don't see me in eight days. I'm going to have a new testimony in eight days. Come on, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Some of y'all are getting dry, but I'm going to have a testimony in eight days. And so Jesus shows up. Jesus shows up. Verse number 26 of St. John chapter 20. Shows up. I'm trying to hurry up and go to the Bible. So he shows up. He shows up. This is where it shows up. To a locked door. I don't make it up to get it. He shows up to a locked door. Um, he shows up and he can't even get in because the door is locked. And I came to tell somebody that the first evidence of the proof that you need that God is on your side is, is that you're getting ready to walk through stuff that he used to stop you. Somebody just Come on, Bishop. You're getting ready to walk through stuff that used to block you. I don't care how hard they tried to stop you. I don't care who tried to put something in your way. I'm not concerned with the stumbling blocks, but the anointing on your life. It's so heavy that no matter what they use to try to stop you, you better look the enemy in the face, eyeball to eyeball, and tell that old nasty devil, no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. It won't work. It won't work. So the door is locked. You see that in the text? And seemingly, logically, Jesus should not be able to get in. There, there is no evidence. You don't read in the text. There's no evidence that he knocked. Come on, Bishop. That there's no evidence that he ding ding rang the doorbell. <laughs> that that's not in the text. Um, it's no evidence that he reached in his pocket and pulled out the key. It's no evidence. Of that, but, um, but in verse number 26 of St. John chapter 20, it says that the door is locked, but right after that, Jesus came through. <laughs> okay. Yes. So it says then to our reasonable, rational logic that Jesus came through the door. So Jesus has defined the second law of thermal dynamics. Use your words, Bishop. The second law of thermodynamics is that energy is not created or destroyed, yes. but it changes form. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm, I'm in science class. Yeah. So, let me see yes, sir. So, so, so because he is matter, he's all divine and he's all human. He had to defy the law of thermodynamics. So either he had to go under the door, 
He had to go over the door. Or he simply went through. The situation that you're facing right now, you're not going to go over it. You're not going to go under it. But God is going to give you the power to go through it. Now the problem is, is that uh, in the realm of thermodynamics is that the body had two options. The body had to decompose on one side of the door and then on the other side of the door it had to recompose and, and many of us are, are going through something that is so critical that when you go through it there's no way that you can go through it without changing so, so you're going through something that's going to change you. I feel that preaching. Not to make you bitter, but, but it's going to make you better. And now we understand that the situation that you're dealing with is going to put you at such a different level that it won't even matter to you who likes you or not. It won't even matter who speaks and who doesn't speak. It won't even matter if you don't want to go with me to dinner after church. Because some of us have learned I don't always need a crowd. I can shout all by myself. As a matter of fact, I can learn and I can pray. All but I came, I need to challenge you because if there's just one person in every world who has gone through something that has changed you, but you're better because of it, would you just give God a praise right now? Because what I went through changed. I said a wonderful change has come. Come over. Come over there. He walked through something that, that should have stopped him. The second proof that God is on your side, please hear me, is when you find the strength to do more with less. Come on, Bishop. Come on, sir. You don't have all the resources and support you need, but people who are watching you, y'all yeah. missed the shot. Yeah. I said, people who are watching you, yeah. they can't tell. Because right. talking to somebody here, you, you had to endure something, but you look as fabulous as you want to be. Right. Yes, yeah, so, Lord. People have no idea. That sometimes you don't even know what day it is. But God's grace. He will say, oh God, I feel like God's grace is sufficient. I can do more with less. This is how much faith that you have. You had the nerve with what seemed to be your last little bit. To allow your managerial skills to, to kick in. Talk about Some of y'all been down before. Uh, moving stuff over here. Because I got to take care of something over there. Now that might be another bit now. To signify to the enemy. If I have to. I know how to survive. On the week we got my prayer. Go, go, but, yeah, but if you've been coming around here, uh, we, 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 we can move past that point because victory is our lifestyle. 
He told the devil, you don't know why they didn't bring it back again because watch what God will do with the favor that's on my life. He will supply all all of your needs according to his riches in glory. I'm glad I'm over here in glory. Or to his riches in glory. Why is Jesus? You have the ability to do more with less. And then Thomas says, I'm, I'm not going to believe until I touch his hands. And I got to move on. And, and so you know by now that um, theologically, uh, historians have, have noted that. When Jesus was crucified, in actuality, the nine-inch nails um, never went through his hands. Um, but the nails were driven through his wrists. All right, so, so Thomas is saying, I, I want to touch his hands because he thinks, please hear this, he thinks that his pain is in one area, but it's actually in another. So people think that they know what you're dealing with, what you're suffering with, but your pain is really Come on, Bishop. in another area. Yes, sir. Come on, Bishop. And, and aren't you tired of people um, telling you just get over it? Yeah. Aren't you tired of people talking about it? Uh, it don't take all of that. Yes, sir. Um, and aren't you tired of folks talking about uh, just pray over it and God will work it out? Because um, when you don't know the pain that I have endured, and I'm talking to somebody in here, you, you had to stay up all night. This morning, you had to pace the floor, and, and there were some days when you drove past your own house. God help me. Crying while you were sitting in the car. And, and people think that they know your pain, but they really don't know. Everything. God, I feel like preaching that. Because they don't know everything that you have been dealing with. And I want to touch him in one area, but that's not the area of pain. And this is not for everybody in the room, but just for a few of you. God is pleased with you. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody could receive the shot. But I said, when I said, God is pleased with you, why preach it? Because you show the world. How we can suffer yes. with class. Yes. 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 That even though somebody hurt you, yes. you yes. didn't give them the pleasure of knowing how really that was. Yes. I'm not going to cry in front of you. I'm not going to get an attitude like you do with me. And when I see you, I'm going to speak to you. How do you do it? The family don't. Is everything all right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think they know the pain, but it's um, in another area. It's another area. Um, so, so when somebody um, is going forth in a praise, when they start to run in praise, when somebody is um, dancing um, uncontrollably, you think, um, when somebody is crying, Tears are shed through the eyes when somebody is standing through the whole sermon. Oh God help me here. Hallelujah. Oh yes. Can I tell you, don't critique them. As a matter of fact, listen, they don't want you rubbing their back. I don't need no starlight mix. Don't, don't take me out of the sanctuary, y'all. I'm just praising through my pain. And as a matter of fact, just maybe, just maybe. Maybe we ought to question the people who don't have a praise. But let the people that want to praise God do whatever we need to do because it's the way that I get a relief from my pain. I feel like this Glory be to God. Yes, Lord. So, so, so when they the nails through his wrist. It severed um, the metacarpal.
metacarpal nerve. And, and the metacarpal nerve is critical because if damaged, it cuts off, hear this, feelings. And, and see what the enemy has been trying to do to you is he's trying to make you lose your nerve. Watch this. He's trying to make you lose your nerve. And he's trying to take away your feelings. And so the metacarpal nerve was severed when they drove the nails into Jesus' wrist. And the reason why this is so critical is because it blocks the body from having the ability is cut off, it can no longer reach out. So here's what's crazy. Jesus walks through the door and Thomas is thinking, I'm, I'm not going to believe it until I can touch his hand. So watch the first thing that Jesus does. He reaches out and, and, and he says, um, see, see my hands? And, and automatically he should not be able to reach out because of the pain that he's been through. But God says, this is when I bless you the most. Here it is. It's when you can reach out when you are in pain. Would you lean over and edify somebody in your vicinity and tell them, this shout is for you. I'm getting ready to tell them. I'm getting ready to reach out and give God a praise. Point to them and say, on your behalf, that God will give you the desires of your heart. Can I tell you, it's getting ready to happen for you. It's getting ready to happen for you. Shout for your neighbor because God is going to give you your story. He's going to give you your story for your story. Yes, Lord. Reach out while you still going through. And say, David, I'm clear of my throat. Say, I'm clear of my throat. Because when I stop this now, you come in now. And if you stole the man and they told that man, Thank you. 